Hi, this is Craig, and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. You know we're at the Annapolis Sailboat Show filming catamarans, walking through them, giving you our impressions, giving a final review at the very end. And I'm gonna flash a bunch of boats on the screen right now. These are all the boats we've already covered. If you haven't seen these episodes and you're interested in any of these, go back and check out one of two playlists. The one from just this year is called the Annapolis Sailboat Show 2018. And then there's one called Comparing Catamarans, which is incorporating all the reviews from last year and this year. There is merit to going back and watching last year's episodes because there were some boats that were there last year that weren't here this year and there's some boats that were here both years but the model they brought last year was way more impressive than the model this year so definitely go back and check those out. The model we're going to review in this episode is the Antares 44. Now it used to be called the Antares 44i but they've now changed it to the Antares 44 GS because they've made a bunch of improvements. Most of which is the big hard bimini above the helm is now extra long with more solar mounted right into the roof and a water catchment system. There's just a bunch of new additions, so they've changed the name slightly. But anybody who is a cruising couple who's been looking at a catamaran probably already knows the name Antares. It is a catamaran that's been designed from the ground up to be a cruising catamaran and not a charter cat. So once you buy an Antares, you are ready to cruise the world without adding any new additions. You know Janice loves boats with a lot of real wood on the inside, and this boat has a lot of it, which we did love. You'll hear Janice give some quick overview thoughts as she walks around before we get our full guided tour, which gets those nitty gritty under the hood details that we need to know. I'm getting on the Antares. I love this back deck, this floor finish. It did not take its foe, but it feels very nice on my feet. Mounting steps to access the boom. It's a lovely large cushion up here. And I like that color also, but crate doesn't. Very flat raised hatches. But a very uh, ample princess seat for me. Fairly adequate bow sprit and uh, I like having a catwalk here. It just feels more stable for whatever needs to be done. The mass over there has steps beside it as well. There's a locker there, but that's the only locker up here. The trampoline is made of the good stuff. It's very flat and wide across here. Shares here, adjustable back. I like this back sitting area. Nice area. Um, the ladder could be bigger. It's not very wide. It's telescopic. Big uh, thingy dab. I like this, this table. It doubles in size so that both settees have dining access. I'm gonna get this nav station over here. Very cozy, comfortable looking nav station here. I like the foot support here. It's a good foot mount for me to adjust myself. Mm -hmm. Nice instruments. Nice wooden steering wheel. So that's awesome. They have a hard dodger with window, with windshield wipers. And uh, an openable sunroof here for breeze. The Antares does come standard with all of the closure. Check out the gorgeous finishes in here. The nav station is beautiful and well located. It comes with a luxurious chair. The uh, settee upholstery is here. The table opens up. And uh, the wood is gorgeous. Or that is also wood. Here you can have an option for carpet. This is a over the wood. This area has been improved. I feel like it's a lot nicer than it used to be. The seating area here, I don't believe is, I think it was not here at the last time we checked it out. That's new and it has a little pull-out table surface. Lots of cabinetry and the corner for the, for the TV over here. Uh, ceilings have uh, upholstered paneling. Okay, so you've heard some of Janice's opinions. She seems to like the boat, as you can tell, and that's a good thing. Happy wife, happy life, right? So if your wife loves the boat, then many years of bliss will come. Now, we're about to get a guided tour by Beth here, and she is very knowledgeable. Very glad that she spent the time with us, because we learned a lot of little details that we wouldn't have known had we just walked through on our own. 
Go ahead. So welcome to the Interis 44. She is uh, designed strictly as a live aboard cruising couple uh, boat. Uh, most people live aboard. As you'll see, there's many, many things that are designed uh, to be a home rather than a charter boat. We don't have any boats in charter. Um, she was designed for safety, designed for blue water cruising. Um, and as I just said, designed to be your home. So one of the things that we always like to point out is that your main salon or living area is open, it's airy, um, very bright. You have good visibility for when you're underway and moving about the boat. The um, nav station here is such that you can have your remote in hand navigate the boat from here if you don't want to be at the helm. Um, although, as you know, our helm is completely protected and covered, and so it's very safe in, in any environment, whether it's rainy, cold, rough, doesn't matter. Um, this table, for when you have a oh, lot wow. of people to dinner, slides out, nice. slides out, slides in, goes up and down to make a cocktail table. Mm -hmm. So it tries to cover all bases. Um, as I said, this boat is designed to live aboard and to cruise for months at a time, so storage is an important factor. You have this volume of storage, uh, this cabinet, this, your AC unit is in the corner, and then you have storage again like that on the other side. So in this layout, which is the E, it's called the E, you have an additional couch here for seating, and then you also have storage underneath this. You have a pull-out desk, which makes a great laptop. Good use of space. Station. Yeah, I um, love this new And then layout. this, uh, is a secret wine cabinet. Oh, oh very nice. I oh, have yeah, the cutouts and everything. Yeah. Um, direct access to the back of the helm panel for ease of wiring and adding on things. Um, this is all electronics, entertainment, you know, that sort of thing. And then this is storage, oh, charts, cool. uh, wow. or whatever. Okay. See, we wouldn't have known this if you yeah, hadn't shown us. Things. All right. Wouldn't have caught ourselves. So as we move through here, we move to the galley. Yes, our galley is down. <laughs> Janice isn't a fan. Everybody <laughs> comes on Still a beautiful and galley. has a preconceived idea about the galley needs to be up. Well, not if it's your liveaboard. If it's your yeah. home, you need to maximize the space in your galley. Then you wouldn't have all this space. You need to be yeah. down low where there's less movement in the boat. Oh, so um, so oh. we tried to make it the best um, down galley out there. Yeah. There's no ceiling. There's plenty of access for conversation. Great fridge. Right there. Uh, you can be down here making a sandwich and talking to the whoever is at the helm. Household stairs down. Always handholds if it's rough. Um, but yet you have plenty of counter space, a full stove, an oven, and a, and a microwave convection oh, oven. Okay. Lots, lots of storage, so you can bring you know most everything from your home kitchen. Uh, Real pots and pans, real you know flatware and, so, and dishes, and whatever you feel comfortable with. You don't have to um, to, to make you know to have plastic plates and, and compromise, there, compromise yeah. in that way. All of our cabinetry is also standalone. It's not a unit that is um, individual and then attached to the boat, um, where you might have creaking and movement and whatnot. These are affixed directly to the fiberglass. It not only stops that extra motion or creaking or, or opportunity to do that, but it allows you to keep everything very clean, no mildew. I mean, I get it. Um, but take a look at this is your pantry mm -hmm. down below as well. And then all of these cabinets here, very good size. Again, easy to keep clean. Double sink, as you had mentioned. Yeah, it's a, a big lot of thing boats for her. Shopping, we don't have the yes. opening port. Um, the boat in general has 24-inch yeah. port lights, which means you don't need to have the AC on unless you're tied to a dock, and that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. You can open all of our hatches, mm -hmm. all of our big port lights, and get a you know fantastic flow of air through mm -hmm. the boat. Um, access to your engines are right where you're standing. They're at the lowest point of the boat, the pivot point. We don't deal with sail drives at all. We believe, keep it simple, stupid. You are gonna be you know, anywhere in the world on this boat. You need to be able to haul it, so she's 21.9 uh, wide. You need to be able to service it, so all of her systems on board are very reliable, easy to get parts for, easy to find service. Um, so the engines are, are here. We uh, have 
shafts, back to protected feathering prop, back to a skeg rudder, um, and then a full keel underneath this portion here. Okay. Is this the fridge? I'm oh, sorry, yeah, that's the that's the fridge. The giant fridge. Yeah, so giant fridge. Size fridge. And then the freezer is all of this space here. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. Good. Yeah. Now we're kind of chopped up. The master is on the other side. We happen to be on this side, so we'll run through okay. yeah. this side of the boat. Your first guest cabin is there. It's a queen size berth with plenty of storage. Again, of course, you don't want to give your guests too much storage because then they'll stay. <laughs> and then they want to stay. But it's a nice accessible bed. And underneath the bed is an area, a cavity, where you can put at least five of the 45 gallon tubs in that space. Spares, um, dry goods, things that you don't need all the time. Okay. And the cabinets over here, too, on the wall. Yeah. Go around this here. makes a great um, bar area because you can put Ooh. your you know, your liquor bottles and whatnot in here. These are padded uh -huh. so that they don't bang around. And then there's storage underneath the floor. There's um, decent hanging lockers throughout the boat. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice as you go through the Antares, there's never a sharp corner. Yeah. There's always a handhold. Again, it's safety first. You know, they yeah, that's very they nice. know you could be in any condition very in a 20 day passage nice. and, and want to be protected. All right. All right, moving forward, this is your third guest stateroom. It can be configured a couple of ways. Um, this obviously is great if you have crew or kids because you got an extra little bunk down here. But you can also get the boat set up, this room set up, so that this is all pantry storage, just straight down oh, to the I floor. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. This part of the bed never changes. It's always there. Um, but again, opportunity for a lot more storage there should you choose the other design, the other layout. Um, the head now comes with a full shower. Um, previous um, year boats did not have, it had a wet shower. Now we offer a dry shower. Awesome. A separate shower. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Again, well ventilated, big hatches overhead. All the hatches are screened and light darkening, you know, the ocean air yes. blinds. Great. Okay. And like you were saying when the camera was off, this is all. It's all cherry wood. Cherry wood veneer. Um, it's a veneer um, on honeycomb to keep it light. Mm -hmm. The boat. Loaded is about 25,000 pounds. Okay. Um, so she's. Yeah. But it's still wood. Oh, yeah. 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 And you still get this homey feel. Yeah. Which not many other yeah, manufacturers can often yeah, offer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the other side. So the, all the new boats are coming with the Volvo D240s. Um, access is like this on the other side as well. This was the first panel I lifted up. Notice the insulation. It's very quiet when the boat is, is underway. This panel comes up as well, so does this 2x4. This 2x4 comes up, this panel comes up, and so does all of this. So in reality, you have full access to the entire engine. All sides of the engine, yeah. Um, I'm standing on an area that has the hot water heater. You're standing on an area that has the Raycor dual fuel filters, the bilge pump, the start battery, um, the fuel boost pump for the generator. So, so it's a totally different uh, door then. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and you can like to change your impeller. There's a door that uh, you can take off so you can get right to the front of the engine. So it's very easy. You're not slinging yourself off the back of the boat on some stairs at 2 a.m. to try and address an engine issue. You're down here where it's dry, well lit. You're not dropping your tools on the board. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a Volvo. You're able to get parts anywhere, anywhere. in the world. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't got to do the deck. Oh yeah, we have another side. Uh, okay, so outside in the cockpit, again, I think I mentioned that the boat is designed for safety first. So one of the things to realize in the cockpit is that the helm is totally protected with great visibility. You can see all four corners of the boat just from this, this spot. Okay? We now offer a windshield that's almost um, clear with no, I mean, we only now have these small dividers. Right. So it's a great line of sight. Obviously, for the boat show, we have a sun. Yeah, all the cushions out. Wouldn't necessarily yeah. be out when you're cruising, but yeah. um, this seat goes back and forth. But from this, from this vantage, and with the two engines, you can single hand this boat. But certainly, a couple, it, it's mm -hmm. a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. um, one of the design features in our cockpit is this area right here where the lines are stored. 
It is that way so that if uh, you yeah. ever had a boarding wave, so it would break the boarding you. wave, reduce the water coming into the cockpit, but if the water did come in, it comes right in, and then it drains right out right there. People say, why do you have to step down and get into your, into your mm -hmm. salon? Well, it's to keep the salt water out of the house. Yeah. Okay? A uh, big storage area underneath the, the floor here. It's an outdoor fridge. That is an option. It's an outdoor beverage fridge. Okay. Okay. All the food out and everything so um, Took all the food out. All of your lines come back to the no, cockpit. Of um, your halyards all come back here. Your sheets go to that electric rinse right there. Um, storage of the lines is very clean. Including propane. Take the car out of the garage. Okay. Put it away mm -hmm. so it doesn't smell like um, that. Let's so see. It's taken care of. There's a surround that attaches in this tracks so that you can be completely protected. No, no. That's, that would come off. Your water maker is found in this locker here, tucked on that shelf right there. Okay. That again is a standard item on our boat. Moving forward, this is the first uh, model to have the elongated uh, roof okay. with a rain collection system on top. I noticed that, and yeah. And 1,200 watts of solar, all built into the roof. So the water catchment system, it actually goes... It can go either way. It can go overboard or it can go into the tanks. Okay. So switch it out. Okay. The boat is 230 amp ports. Okay. Okay. Yep. Her rig is um, ICW friendly. You can get uh, 60 feet, is what we say. And the, um, the makeup of all of the standing rigging is oversized. We have okay. never demasted a boat. Kind of a work pool is yeah. there after Okay, cool. Our and sail it, area is not off the charts on purpose because of the mast, mast height yeah. um, and because we're designed for safety. We're right. not designed as a racing boat, although we do quite well. Um, we want to make sure that you're not overpowering. Yeah, that's how things break. Yeah. Now this in-mast furling main, is that a standard or an option? Okay. You can still get a, a fully battened yeah. main um, or you can choose to do this. More and more people are going this way though. Yeah. We have that on our boat now. But it sometimes does bind, so we kind of think maybe we'd, we'd go old school with the old battens and... Yep. You yeah. never know. You never know. This locker here is where your house bank battery lives. So that's your house bank. Okay. And then that's your line management system that runs down inside the mast. Oh, and I And then see. down inside a very protected um, oh, raceway. Oh, it comes out at the back. Yep. It's a great place for fenders, extra lines. Um, Let's see. This is your... Acre locker. We have a fresh water and salt water wash down. Um, obviously, your water tankage is there as well for filling. Okay. Um, but it's really nice because you can hose down your your chain while you're bringing your anchor up. Okay. And then over here is oh, that's the generator locker. We were talking about before. Um, yeah. yeah. And I encourage you to bring your camera and go down there because you won't believe how big it is. You have about. Six five headroom in there. That's impressive. That's a lot of storage. So that generator is at eye level, very easy to maintain, change the oil. Very cool. Yeah, definitely ease of working on things. Yep. Um, new this year is the, the bowsprit, a permanent bowsprit versus the um, previous adjustable one. That is the standard dinghy that comes with the boat. Okay. Oh, he's clearly. That's nice. The boat also comes with a suite of sails. We do the Screecher, the Genoa, and the Main. Um, it's all bars along the lifelines. Yeah, that's an option. Um, you can choose okay. to do the this, this solid stainless. Okay. Camera, or you can do this on the top. That's standard. Okay. But it is an option. Okay. Okay. I think that about, that about does the it. Hot points All on right. The, uh, and Terry's 44. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, a lot of features. A lot of information there. A lot of features we would have walked right by and not even known. All so right. thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Memo has been building the boat down in Argentina at his yard now for 10 years. Cool. Um, he was the, the builder to start in 08 when the molds went from Canada down. Um, so he knows it like the back of his hand. But um, he, he builds about three, three boats a year. Okay. Um, 
he's got a woodworking shop that is, um, you've seen it, yeah. generations yeah. of, Very nice. of woodworkers. Um, but if you have any specific questions about, uh, and then the boats are all launched in, uh, in by his yard, outside of Buenos Aires. Uh, shakedown cruise is done right there, so okay. the factory can, you know, tweak anything. Yeah, that I've seen that about the owners coming down there. They are extremely helpful in going, if necessary, going with the new owners away and up the coast of Brazil because sometimes it's a little scary. Yeah. It's a big first step, right? Yeah. But um, but they've got many hands who can go along and be captains and assist and whatnot, so that you're not being thrown. Yeah, the throwing the keys and like, good luck, good luck. see you later. Because we all know. Yeah. Yeah, it's happens. intimidating. Yeah. And, uh, so it's nice to know that you have a boat yard that's supporting their clients even even after they leave the dock. Um, memos, a phone call away, and that's awesome. Email and all of that. We've always said the 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 joinery and the carpentry inside is really beautiful. Like it? Yes, everything's rounded. I know it takes a lot of work, a lot of labor hours to do that. That's great. Yes. It's a small, uh, it's a small factory, family run. Right. My son works with him as well. Um, very approachable. They love to have buyers come down and watch their boat being built. You know, right. take a visit, take a tour. Yeah. Um, have some Argentinian wine. Yeah. Great. It's an experience. Yeah, we also we build the boat for the people. Right. We right. are not a factory, just building boats. Right. And then just the assume you want. Yeah. 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 Because we talk with the owners. And we said, what do you want? Hey, I want to put this and this, or change this or this. Okay, if it is possible, we do it. Yeah. So, it's about each boat is for each boat. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's not just mass produced. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a small owners group, so yes. we talk to each other and share ideas. And, um, yeah, it does feel like a family, from what I've, I've read every, from everybody from these uh, the forums. And, yeah, yeah. All over the world. And the factory keep a, 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 a big support to all the owners of the boat, even the PDQs, okay. all around the world. Yeah. They saying, oh, okay, Memo, I broke my bilge pump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which model is yeah. you're using right now? Yeah. Use this one, this one. It'll this be one. very oh, similar to the one. one yeah. Right. Well, you are in New Zealand. Okay, I yeah. can ship it there. Yeah. Whatever. Exactly. Because people are selling it all around the world. Yeah. But at this time, there are something like eight to ten boats in the Indian Ocean, yep. just going around. Yeah. And true blue water three, boats, right? Three, yeah. three or four in the map. Yeah. So. Well, that's our plan. Our plan is to. We're, when, I'm going to be retiring as a, from a police officer. This is where the off duty comes from. Ah. And. Uh, in five years, so we're going to sell everything, the house, cars, motorcycles, our existing boat, and, uh, and buy and something. So it's hard for us to know what our total uh, budget is right. until we sell everything, but we have to try and be reasonable, right? So, but this is uh, definitely on the list. So, so th look forward to hearing from you when it's when There you go. In which order? Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, here we are in front of the Antares 44. We really like this boat. This time. Yes. A lot more than last time. We did like it last time as well. But they've made they a made couple of significant changes, which were drastic improvements, in wow. my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, the layout of the main salon before they had kind of a, a rounded corner, and yeah, the washer and dryer was there, but um, otherwise, it was like a kind of a big open area unnecessarily. And now there's an option to put a set T there with a pull out table surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, I liked it a hundred times better than what it was before. And also, one of my critiques last time were the, ca the heads. Yeah. Like I felt like a boat for that price should have a separate shower. I don't know why that is such a big deal for me, but I like to have no, just a little a bit of an enclosure boat. and yeah. separation for the shower. Uh, so now that's now been upgraded to just with the separate shower. So yeah. It's still galley down, but it is. They were listening to your critiques. They must have watched it. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so all our little critiques from last year, not that we didn't like the boat, yeah. we're, we're satisfied. This new boat's been changed yeah. completely. So it is really uh, up there on the top, near the top mm -hmm. of our list, and it's 945,000 fully kitted out. Yeah. Now, anybody who knows Antares 44s know that they're built for liveaboard cruisers, so yeah. true blue water boats. So they it's come. It's not in charter. It's not. For yeah, it's not a charter boat. So it's designed right from the factory with all the gear you'd need to live on it full time. Nothing needs to be upgraded. So and there's other enhancements too, other than the, like the the back has been improved as yeah. well. Yeah, the the, uh, the hard dodger over over the uh, over the uh, salon is now extra long, so it's even more room for even more solar panels. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 awesome. It's a big so improvement. Now it's on our top of the list. Yeah, it's near the top of our list. It's getting up there. Okay, so on to the next boat.
So clearly we like this boat a lot and we love the interior cabinetry and the woodwork and the level of effort that's been put into this boat. Our only thing that scares us is probably the price. It's a little bit out of our price range, but maybe if we found one used at a really good price, we could afford it. So stay tuned for the next episode because we're going to do the Balance 526 and we're going to get a guided tour by the guy who owns the company. So yeah, he knows everything about this boat. And you may be thinking, Craig, if you can't afford a Antares 44, you certainly can't afford a Balance 526. And you are very, very right. The reason we're putting it on is because, hey, there's lots of viewers that want to see this and they may have way deeper pockets than we have. The other thing is we want to prove we don't hate performance catamarans, even though people think we do. We just hate boats that don't have any interior volume and no storage for your clothes and your belongings. This boat has it all. It has all the space, comfort, and storage capacity of a cruising catamaran, but has that racing pedigree because it's made of carbon fiber. Everything about this boat is all about speed, and yet they've gotten comfort in there. So how do they do that? Well, price. If you're gonna get both of those features, you're gonna have to pay the price, but this boat is about the same price as the Utremer 5X we showed you, which we weren't huge fans of because of the lack of storage. So there you go. If you're that every man or woman like us that can't afford a boat like this, well, it's still fun to watch because you never know, you may have some long lost relative who's just about to bequeath you a boatload of money and then this might be your boat. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. Subscribe so you don't miss that episode. Hit that little bell button beside it so you're notified when the next episode is up. If you enjoyed this episode and found it informative, give it a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. And I'd wanna do a special thanks to the patrons that support the channel because it's really without them, this probably wouldn't happen. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.